This ITTV special report is brought to you in part by Newegg. Trust Newegg for your home and now for your business. Open an account at NewEggBusiness.com today and enjoy one-stop shopping and volume savings right away. Now, from Into Tomorrow, this is an ITTV special report. Hello, everyone. Welcome Into Tomorrow. I'm Dave Graveline. We have the pleasure this week of coming to you from the Miami Science Museum and Space Transit Planetarium. And this is like old home week for me in the mid-70s. Yeah, I know, way back. I actually had to learn how to operate this console in the Space Transit Planetarium. It's truly amazing. Took a while to learn. The handbooks were amazing. The people were amazing. It was truly an interesting experience to operate this equipment, which is still working today. This was the first planetarium, by the way, with a third access. So they had roll, pitch, yaw. It was used by NASA astronauts to train for space flight. This STP model was discontinued back in 1971, has an incredible amount of history with it. And of course, we're showing you a lot of the behind the scenes this week from here at the Planetarium, as well as bringing you this week in tech history from here and Rob's product spotlight about the new location for the Miami Science Museum, among other things. All that coming up on this week's ITTV special report. A little more about this planetarium? Well, the Space Transit Planetarium has about 12 miles of electrical wiring, over 40 motors, more than 6,000 electrical connections, and projects 5,600 visible stars. In 1966 dollars, it costs $150,000. It's priceless today. Take a peek. What I think is one of the more intriguing things that was designed by hand and built by hand by Americans using rulers and pencils and so forth. No computers when this machine was built. The whole machine's built out of a Korean War era surplus parts, military parts, which is pretty cool. It's 100% made in USA. Over the years, we've had many visitors from all over the world, and very soon we'll be approaching our 10 millionth visitor. Okay, so I'm about, let's see, 91.2, 91 degrees. Boy, am I cooking. The Miami Science Museum. There's so many cool things to do in a museum, especially technology, which reminds me... Do you have our cool Into Tomorrow app yet? Well, it's available for everything I, your iPhone, your iPod, your iPad, and, of course, everything Android. Be sure and check it all out at intotomorrow.com. We have the pleasure of speaking to the woman who's running everything here at the Miami Science Museum. Jillian, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Very nice to welcome you here today. Excellent. Great to have you. And um, we've had a lot of fun looking at a lot of cool things here at the Miami Science Museum. But we're getting a look into tomorrow since the museum is going to a new location. And there's going to be a lot of cool modern things and a lot of green technology. Can you tell our viewers where we are right now? Yes, we're in the animal hospital here. We've got our wildlife clinic where all the birds and other animals that come to the museum come through. And we have just completed renovating this in a green way that will make it really work and be a prototype for the new museum in the future. So we have solar panels outside that come into the, the hospital that provide some of the electricity for it. And then every single piece of equipment we've got has got a label and feeds into this great screen we see here so that we can see the total energy consumption. Now how will that be used at the new museum? Well the whole new museum will be like a giant exhibit in its own right. So every single bit of energy consumption will be monitored and also at the same time you'll be able to put energy in. So that, like our dance floor that you've already seen, we'll have a wide variety of different sorts of equipment at the museum that will help you charge up the museum throughout the day and help reduce our energy consumption as well. 
We'll also have a big green roof, uh, which will help reduce the energy use and a variety of other equipment around. And what other things have you most excited about the new project? I think I really like the way we've built on what we've got here, but done it in a different way and a more exciting way and something that you won't be able to see anywhere else at all. So converting this wildlife center into something which will be the world's best aquarium with all the local habitats that you've got here on top, but then being able to penetrate down into the sea and down to the Gulf Stream makes it really special. In Springs 2014 is when we'll see the building open and this coming year you'll see us start work on site when we do all the work with the soil and soil remediation. That's perfect. Good luck with the project. We're very excited about it and obviously we'll give you more information once we have it so stay tuned guys. Pleasure talking to you Jillian. Thank you. Very nice to have you here. Back to you Dave. Thanks Rob. A little bit of history for you. This globe behind me was donated by Pan Am World Airways. Remember Pan Am? Many years ago, they provided it to the Miami Science Museum. Speaking of history, it's time for This Week in Tech History. Here's Chris. From the heart of the exhibits here at the Miami Science Museum, here's this week's look back at tech history. This week in 1914, the first transcontinental telephone service was inaugurated when two people had a conversation between New York and San Francisco. And this week in 1998, Bell Atlantic and GTE announced a nearly $53 billion stock swap deal to create the second largest telephone company behind AT&T. The resulting mega corporation, later known as Verizon Communications, began with 63 million local telephone lines in 38 states. You know, this is one of only 12 of these projectors ever built. 11 were put into planetariums like this. One of them was actually put in a nightclub in New York City. Quite a bit different than just your regular mirror ball. This was also the first planetarium projector capable of showing the sky as seen from a point other than Earth. That's our special look back at This Week in Tech History. Okay, so you have your iPod. How about your AirPod? This is a car that runs up to 45 miles per hour, by the way, on compressed air. It's designed by the French. Took 10 years to come up with this idea. They've been testing the idea. The car's engine uses nothing but compressed air to move the pistons. I'd love to take this out for a spin here on our Miami streets, but they won't let me. Too many other cars that will probably damage this one. It's the air pod. Speaking of energy savings, Rob's up next with some cool new energy ideas with the new Miami Science Museum. Rob? Thanks, Dave. We're getting a sneak peek at some of the cool exhibits you'll be able to see at the new Miami Science Museum. We're speaking to Chris Trigg. How are you doing, sir? Good. How are you? Great. I noticed your title is Energy Officer, so you're going to tell us about all the cool energetic exhibits you have. And tell us about this behind us, the Energy Tracker. What is that? Energy Tracker is the new exhibit that we have here at the Miami Science Museum. And what's unique about Energy Tracker is that unlike a traditional exhibit where it's all located in one spot in the museum, Energy Tracker is spread all throughout the museum. So there's exhibits all over the building that you get to go and try out that explore energy. You start right here where we are now, which is Energy Central, and you pick up a ticket. We kind of have this loose public transportation idea going on. So you follow one of different lines throughout the museum, and what you're actually tracking is how energy changes form. So that's, that's the kind of topic that um, brings all of these different exhibits together. So as energy changes form between different types, you're keeping track of that between each of the exhibits. What about the energy dance floor, which you have here that I've tried, and it's a lot of fun. What can you tell our viewers about that? Yeah, the energy dance floor is great. It's a dance floor where when you're dancing on it, your energy is actually powering up the tiles, which then light up. So it's a lot of fun. You can plug in your iPod and use your own music. Um, we've had it here for a couple months. It's extremely popular, and it's one of the exhibits on, uh, on one of the tracks for Energy Tracker. And how are the kids reacting to all these cool, the cool things they're seeing here? Yeah, you know, it's it, the things like the energy dance for an air-powered car, you don't see them anywhere else. And so I think it's always, a, it's, people are really kind of impressed and inspired by seeing these things. Um, they're not even the kind of things you normally see on, on blogs or something like that. They're really unique. And you get to see them in person, you get to go right up, you get to dance on them or touch them. So it's a great opportunity to get up close and personal with them. Awesome. And you too can try this. If you're visiting South Florida, check out the Miami Science Museum. Lots of cool stuff here. Nice talking to you, Chris. Great talking to you. Thanks. Back to you, Dave. Having way too much fun here at the Miami Science Museum, you absolutely need to make sure that you visit. If you're in the South Florida area, by all means, what are you waiting for? If you plan to visit South Florida in the near future, do check it out. The Planetarium, the Miami Science Museum, so much to do, so many cool things. We can't wait 
till the new museum is out. Speaking of can't wait, don't forget to join us from Los Angeles coming up and SIGGRAPH, our remote broadcast from there. And if you've got any questions at all about anything that you've seen, heard us talking about here at the Miami Science Museum, drop us a call anytime, 24-7 by the way, toll free from anywhere in North America, 1-800-899-INTO, 800-899-4686. We'll get an answer for you on the next broadcast. Stay tuned into tomorrow.